Day 20 Conclusion and Day 21 Introduction Your Conversation Jonah's exquisite letter presented on Day 20 captures a transition of awareness towards an increase in the conscious capacity to align with the presence inherent to non-materiality that more and more people are becoming able to maintain in daily life. A paradigm shift in the depth of how we understand and experience ourself comes now, many years after the pendulum of experiencing swung away from life as a process driven by our internal aspect and toward experiencing life as a primarily externally unfolding event. Throughout the mind master's silent journey, you have learned and experienced that the term human being is deeply representative of the dual nature of our lives. Human lives in the self's world and deals so often with the external material aspect of our lives. Being, or you, is the non-material aspect of our lives. Human must cope with the existential questions that living a material life as a human raises. In being, though, as Jonah attests, no questions exist. Therein lies the paradox of human life. The deep irony of the paradox of the human being's condition is that our human aspect was embedded with a self's fear of a return to non-materiality, and, therefore, with a fear of the return to non-duality that human death assures. Meanwhile, our being aspect yearns each moment for a return to non-duality. Human provides thrust and wherewithal, finding solace and a synergy with the outward aspect and movement of our lives. Meanwhile, a call to being drives the proverbial return movement of our lives. Even this description does not adequately capture the complexity of being human. Most of us, after all, are living aspects of both our outward and our return journeys on any given day of our lives. Successfully answering the question of how to live is discovering a balance in your life that emerges from having a direct access to both your human and your being aspects. A deep recognition of the necessity of developing an intense intimacy with both aspects allows the creative wisdom of being to flow through you into the world and honors Eckhart Tolle's prescient observation. Human alone is never enough. We've seen the results of understanding the self's human material world as our primary world. We've witnessed that religious, political, spiritual, and philosophical systems of belief degrade the human spirit to the degree that they are formed of a fear that the individual is not wholly adequate, precious, complete, and equal by her simple and profound existence. The still popular self-story proclamation of special self-status above others by birthplace, birthright, or through a profession of faith signals how far the self can and often does stray from the timeless truth of history's deepest spirits. The kingdom is within. So, what self will be expressed through the kingdom in you? How will you choose to live in this age of a return to spirit, this age of neuroplasticity, as our cultural pendulum begins its return journey? This age of seeing our brains as distillers of vast information and generators of life stories from which we are able to create ourself, one moment, one word, one story at a time. You can try on new lives, or you can take off old lives. You can even master a new life each two years for the rest of your life. If you have read and lived the mind master's silent journey with the attention and effort it requires, you already know my opinions about what you are and what makes you. Human life makes you by requiring your conscious intention of navigation to journey home to yourself. Facing the questions repeatedly and with intensity makes you. Emotionally visualizing your response in your relationship to life makes you. Leaving why behind, though, when you're ready to, is an act of trust and faith that frees your wisdom to express its genius, gratitude, and beauty beyond any understanding you could ever capture or hope to describe. What will the conversations of your life be?